the most powerful instrument of seduction, and this is the week of seduce thyself. I take responsibility for my own arousal. I don't wait for the music and for the technical structures right, to create a moment of prayer. It's my moment. I'm going to step in. I'm going to love it open. And I'm going to let the moment love me open. And there's only one decision we ever make. Do I step in and love the moment open and let the moment love me open? Do I step in and fuck the moment open and let the moment fuck me open? Or does the moment remain closed and I remain closed? Do I birth the possibility of possibility with which my moment is pregnant because I'm willing to take my unique risk? Or does the moment remain closed, barren, stillborn? Music loves us open. The most powerful instruments of seduction is, is clearly music. Music seduces, right? Music changes our mood. Here, if you can, if you can, just gentle, gentle request. Just even close your eyes even deeper. Some things we can see with our eyes open. Some things we can only see with our eyes closed. Music changes our mood. And the move from homo sapien to the new human and the new humanity to homo amor takes place when we change our mood and we change the mood of culture itself. And Heidegger wasn't wrong when he said that all that exists is mood. Mood's the fundamental category of reality. So we have to change our mood. We have to deepen our mood. But our mood is, is the core qualia of existence. And music changes our mood at its core. But I want to tell you something strange about music. Music is not about spirit. That's a mistake. Let's go slow. Music has been here from the beginning of time. And it's music that, if you will, discloses the blessedness that's at the heart of all things. Isn't that true? Music discloses the blessedness, wrote Aldous Huxley that is at the heart of all things. And although music was here from the beginning of time, music was not here before time. So here we go. I want to try and if we can set a little bit of, of our direction today for a second, okay? Music is always about love songs. And it could be personal love songs, or it could be love's loss. It could be love of spirit, love of nature, love of country or their loss. But music is always intimately bound with love. Music holds the agonies and the ecstasies, right? The devotions and the demands, right? The rapture and the ravaging of love itself. It's always at the center of music. Music is the mathematics of intimacy. That's what Pythagoras understood, that music and math live together, right? In some sense, all truth is comprised of music and mathematics. So wrote Margaret Fuller, who died at age 40, right? a close friend of Whitman. But here's this. Music is not of what we're told is spirit. There's actually no music in cosmos, obviously, before the manifest world of matter emerges. There's no music before there's matter because sound itself is made up of matter. Now, that's shocking. And the entire split between thought and feeling between body, embodiment, and a form of ensoulment, interiors and exteriors is a false split. We think music, right, is spirit that arouses. No. Music is of matter itself, right? Sound is an expression 
of one of the earliest forms of matter, gravitational waves. And gravitational waves disclosed by Einstein's mathematical formula, but only discovered actually experimentally in 2015 with the help of a three kilometer long tuning fork that the universe built through human creativity and imagination, which is the universe imagining itself, these gravitational waves that form music, our eyes are closed, these gravitational waves that form music are an expression of time. So music is an expression of time, which isn't separate from space. That's what Einstein's theory of relativity tells us, rooted in mathematics, the intimate structures of the universe. So we live in and we're composed of space-time, but music at its core, what's music at its core? It's not made up of notes of sound. Rather, music is made up of what sound is at its core. Music is made up of atoms of time. So if you go back to the Big Bang, when the single point of the singularity stretches itself out in a line, time is birthed into reality. And within that line of time, there's continuity. Moments distinguish themselves. And don't try and listen now if you can with your mind. Just feel it with your body. Don't worry about the concepts. Just feel it. Just, just feel, the, feel the science. Don't worry about the details. Within that line of time, there's continuity. Moments distinguish themselves. And it's the distinction of moments that allows for chords and harmonies. It's in the distinction of moments and the break in the continuity of time that rhythm and melody are born. In the last minute, this gets wild, friends. So once we realize that music is the stuff of time and that we ourselves are made of time, then we realize that we're made of music. Cha. Cha. So let's just say it one more time, eyes closed. The interior feels and sees. We ourselves are made of time because time is part of the space-time continuum. It's part of matter. That original matter in the first nanosecond of the Big Bang, when the space-time continuum is born, lives in us. We're composed of space-time. Once we realize that music is the stuff of time and that we ourselves are made of time, we further realize that we're made of music. So the music that seduces us lives inside of us. See, that's why music seduces us. It actually lives in us. And there's these distinctions that are drawn in the great traditions and Integral theory beautifully recapitulates some of them between the eye of the mind, right? The, the rational mind, moral reasoning, mathematics, beautiful. And the eye of the senses, the eye of the flesh, right? What you can touch, feel with the five senses. And then the eye of spirit. And with all due respect, it's an important distinction, but it's actually rooted in a medieval understanding and doesn't actually reflect reality because it speaks of these three eyes as separate, and they're not. Let's see if we can just re-say it for a second and say this out loud for the first time. Let's think of the eye of the flesh. It's one eye. It's the five senses. But when you go to the depth of the eye of the flesh, the eye of the flesh becomes the eye of the heart. It's what we mean when we say that at its best, Sex is love in the body. Wow. Sex is cosmic eros performed in the flesh. See, that's not the lowly eye of the flesh or the eye of the senses. And the eye of the mind that feels mathematics and feels ethos is also an expression of 